During this holiday season, give your loved ones a gift that keeps on giving for the rest of their life. Torpedo Pot is the only affordable self-growing flower pot that ensures your future food survival. All you do is add soil, seeds, and seedlings to the flower pot and watch your plants grow. Torpedo Pot can grow nutritious food in such abundance and variety that you can produce more food than your local farm. Visit www.torpedopot.com. Salibonani unjani makadi. Hello everyone, welcome back to another broadcast of the African Diaspora News Channel with me, your host, Marie Tawana, aka DJ Wokohontas, Sitole Imali. Coming from House of Stones, uh, I am here to talk about uh, a topic, uh, an event, rather, a historical event that was really, really a dark time that happened in our country, Zimbabwe, and it is still an issue till today, although compensation is being offered to the victims. And of course, I'm referring to no other than Gukura Hundi, the massacre, the genocide that happened during the 1980s, the early 1980s. Um, Gukura Hundi in the Shona language means the early rain that uh, washes away chaff. And uh, this... Um, Attempted genocide was on uh, the Ndebele people uh, of Zimbabwe, and that is the second biggest tribe in our country. And it is reported that um, over 20,000 uh, people were killed, but some have also stated that it's actually more than that. They have been actually, it's actually been over 80,000 people. Um, I'm not so sure how true that is, but usually the number that pops up is 20,000. But some people on even Twitter spaces have said it's more than 20,000. So this was a very dark time um, uh, in our country, and it happened in the Matabelian province uh, in the western part of the country. And uh, these civilians, who were mostly the Ndebele tribe, were uh, killed by what is called the 5th Brigade. And um, this began in January 1983 when Mugabe waged a campaign of terror against the people in Matabeleland in the western part of the country. The massacres are one of the darkest times. And it was obviously, um, you know, sparked because of uh, the tribalism, mostly because at the time, um, the two distinct uh, ruling parties, uh, which were the Zimbabwe African People's Union, SAPU, and the Zimbabwe African National Union, SANU, um, had both emerged from the National Democratic Party in the early 1960s. And at the time, SAPU was led by the late Joshua Nkomo, um, a Ndebele nationalist, and ZANU, was, which is uh, Zimbabwe African National Union, was led, which is the ruling party at the moment in the country, was led by the late Reverend Dambani Ngisitole, who is endowed, like myself, and um, uh, the late Robert Mugabe. Now, it was mostly sparked because of the fact that people say, you know, the the ruling parties I knew at the time had a fear of the Debele people taking over the country because obviously uh, the other party, which was led by the late Joshua Como, who had later on become the, va the vice president of the country, were worried that they were practically just worried that he was going to end up being president and the Debele people were going to be the one in power and not the Shona people. So even before this uh, genocide, there was a lot of hatred and there still is a lot of hatred right now in the country. And, um, you know, there have been long, strong feelings between the majority Shona people of Zimbabwe and the Ndebele people in the south of the country. It dates back to the early 1800s, when the Ndebele were pushed from their traditional land in what traditional lands in what is now South Africa by the Zulu and the Boer. The Ndebele arrived in what is known as Matabele land, and in turn pushed out or required tribute from the Shonas living in the region. Now also... Um, 
the Shoshones at the time in the 1800s had complained that the Debele people were taking their women and making them wives. So that also apparently also sparked a lot of hatred amongst the two groups. And independence then, of course, came to Zimbabwe um, in the 1980s. And uh, then Mugabe rose um, to prominence and gained the post of prime minister. And Joshua Nkomo was then given a mis ministerial post in Mugabe's cabinet, but was removed from office in February 1982. He was accused of planning to overthrow uh, Mugabe. This is one, you know, of the reason why also they, they just didn't want, uh, you know, they were really fearing that the Debele people were going to take over. And at the time of independence, North Korea offered to train Zimbabwe's army and Mugabe agreed. More than 100 military experts arrived and began to work with the 5th Brigade. These troops were then deployed in Matabiland ostensibly to crush pro Mukomo Zanu forces, um, people who were supporting um, the late Joshua Nkomo, um, who were, of course, Ndebele. Um, then, in the year 1987, December 2022, um, December 2022, we celebrated as a unity. Unity Day today uh, is when Mugabe and Nkomo reached a conciliation. This was right way after the, the, the Gokuraundi genocide, um, which uh, had lasted actually four years. Um, it was brought to an end and they signed a unity agreement. Although thousands and thousands were killed uh, in Matabeleland and the southeast of Zimbabwe, there was still a lack of international recognition. The international community wasn't actually covering um, much about what was actually happening at the time um, of the extensive uh, human rights abuses. Um, and it was only 20 years later that a report was um, released by the Catholic Commission for Justice and Peace and the Legal Resources Foundation of Harare. Now, Mugabe has revealed little. He had revealed little. Um, since the 1980s, and what he said was a mixture of denial and obfuscation, ob 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 as reported in, two in 2015 by the Guardian.com in the article, New Documents Claim to Prove Mugabe Ordered Gokurawandi Killings. Now, this has always been a very sensitive issue for a lot of Zimbabweans to talk about, and some say that he had been forced by the military as well. To do that because apparently the military was also fearful that you know the Ndebele people were gonna be in power and then Mugabe then described this mass he described only this um, early massacre in the 1980s as a moment a moment of madness um, and it's a statement that he's supposedly apparently he never repeated it and during an interview with the South African uh, talk Talk show host Mugabe then Mugabe then blamed the Gukurenda, the Gukurahundi murders on armed bandits that were coordinated by Zapu and a few fifth, fifth brigade soldiers. As I've said before, that he blamed it on the military. However, recorded correspondence from his colleagues revealed that in fact, not only was Mugabe fully aware of what was going on, but the fifth brigade was acting under Mugabe's explicit orders. Now. Fortunately enough, now our current president, Comrade Emerson Munangagwa, has actually um, conceded to popular demands by the people who not only were affected and whose loved ones were killed in the genocide, but even those who weren't affected um, have, um, you know, they've made demands to compensate, have made demands to the president to compensate families affected by the 1980s atrocities in the Matabeleland and Midlands regions, um, commonly referred to as Gokurahonde, in which is accused of playing a key role. Now, there have been calls from rights groups and affected communities to come up with comprehensive me measures to bring closure to the massacres, in which an estimated of 20,000 uh, Ndebele people were killed by the North Korea-trained 5th Brigade between 1981 and 1986. The then Prime Minister Robert Mugabe was sought to wish sought to wish them away and never acknowledged the genocidal atrocities. His successor Munangagwa has tried to resolve it, but his attempts were roundly dismissed as being so piecemeal they cannot bring 
the much needed as bring so a piecemeal they cannot bring much the needed closure and a good number of survivors still have no identity documents such as birth certificates ids and have failed to go to secondary school while casualties lie in mass graves so these are obviously people who um in the mass graves are people who they were related related to such as parents siblings grandparents cousins uncles aunts um and because of those people's deaths uh, they haven't, I suppose, it's been affected to the extent that they can't even go to school. They have no means of income as to go to school. And according to a statement issued by the president's office Saturday, Monangahago's administration will compensate families um, affected by the mass killings in a program to be spearheaded by traditional leaders, mainly the chiefs. This um, he had, of course, um, uh, stated uh, in August of 2021, um, the 21st of August, and it says that the president met a National Council of, Chief, a Council of Chiefs to receive recommendations to resolve the issues related to the ground. Notably, it has been resolved that each chief will spearhead the resolution of the issue in his or her area of jurisdiction. A one-size-fit-all approach would be inappropriate for this program. Chiefs are to go back to their respective areas to consult on the issues raised. So whichever chief is ready, the president will deploy resources to their area to support the resolution to issues in that area. A systematic approach to the resolution of issues raised should be adopted so that feedback is given on preparedness by a particular chief in issues requiring attention in his or her area of jurisdiction. Now, there has been talks of burials for, you know, the relatives of the, the you know, the relatives of uh, the people who were killed, as well as the victims who survived, um, as well as national building, counseling and psychological support, consultation of victims. Um, but, you know, as much as this is supposed to be a reconciliation, personally, I feel as a Zimbabwean myself, even though I was not born yet when this massacre occurred, um, I feel like as much as the victims and those who were related to the people killed as much as they get compensation i feel like it'll never replace that moment that time when you saw your loved ones just being killed um the, it will never replace the bitterness and the anger the tribalism that is still existing today in our country because a lot of the times you find that if especially in the Matibililand province, especially in the second biggest city, Blauayo, when a Shona person gets a job at a company and the Debele person doesn't get a job, it kind of causes a lot of conflict, especially for that company. There's still a lot of tribalism that people, quite a number of people don't want to address. You'd be surprised to find that some families, if it's a Shona family, and the girl wants to marry a Ndebele man, the Shona family doesn't want her to go and marry the Ndebele man. Or if it's a Ndebele family, uh, the guy is supposedly Ndebele or the girl's Ndebele, uh, they want to marry someone who's Shona, the Ndebele family doesn't allow him or her to marry uh, a person uh, from that tribe. There's a lot of bitterness, anger and hate. And I don't think compensation is going to replace the grief and the mourning that some people still feel. I honestly don't think it's going to replace that because 20,000 is a lot and a lot of people. If it's 20,000, 30,000, if it's more than that, it's still a lot of people. And it's unfortunate that as much as this trying to is supposed to give um to bring national healing and reconciliation some people are saying they've been saying that even those who are the victims of such have been saying that they you know they feel that it's still not much it's not going to replace those people who died their loved ones who died in Gukurahondi. so yeah i'm just hoping that some other ways methods could um you know help in terms of trying to stop the tribalism amongst each other because this just tribalism had always been there but this this massacre just made it worse um well yes please let us know what you think in the comments section and of course 
You can follow us here at African Diaspora News Channel on Facebook, Instagram. We are also on Twitter. That is AFR Diaspora News, AFR Diaspora News on Twitter. I myself, Marito, and I'm also on Twitter, Twitter at Ndini Actress. And I'm also on Instagram at Ndini Actress Watcher. Well, that's it from me. Um, I hope to see you next in the oh. <laughs> Um, there's certain incidents where, for example, um, a friend of mine was playing music by a Shona musician and he was around people of Ndebele, uh, from uh, who are Ndebele, and they just literally told him, can you please stop playing that Shona music? We don't play that kind of music. We only play um, Ama Piano, which is a South African genre of music, you know, music that's sung by South Africans or people, you know, of, uh, you know, Ndebele descent. We don't listen to anything that's Shauna, so please do not play that here. Um, they literally took his phone and were like, you're not going to play any Shauna music. And if you, when you're playing Debele music or music that's South African, then, you know, we'll give you back your phone. So there's just still a lot of hatred, and I don't think this these, these conversations are going to 100% solve the tribalism that is still occurring in our country. Anyways, that is it for me um, here on the African Diaspora News channel. You can, of course, follow us on Facebook. Um, we are on Instagram and we're also on Twitter. That is AFR Diaspora News, AFR Diaspora News. And, of course, myself, Mari Tawana. I'm also on Twitter at Ndini Actress. And I'm also on Instagram at Ndini Actress underscore Wacho. Well, that's it for me now. I will definitely see you in the next broadcast. It's cheers for now. Living in America as a black person, you recognize there is one set of laws for you and one set of laws for those, especially in the white community. In our book, Passive Aggressive Racism in the System of White Supremacy, I take you through times in my life when I first started noticing white supremacy. We teach you how to recognize it, identify it, and also counter it in our book. This book is a beginner's course for those that are just starting to wake up and open their eyes to see the system of white supremacy. As a black American person, you must understand this system because this system is life or death to you. How you handle it, how you deal with it, it can affect your mental health if you don't understand this system. Pick up our book, Pass Aggressive Racism and the System of White Supremacy today on Amazon.